What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, back with some more boxing. Now, I want to give a very special birthday shout out to the main man himself, Angel Garcia, the father of champion Danny Garcia, Danny Swift Garcia. So, I want to spend some time talking about Angel Garcia. Um, whether you love him or hate him, he's relevant. And he's relevant because of the work he's done with his son. Um, two guys from Philly, father and son tandem, and they set out on a mission, and so far, they're undefeated, and they're looking good in their fights. Danny Garcia has stepped up in competition against all odds, beat guys that he wasn't supposed to beat. Kendall Holt at the time was supposed to be too powerful for Danny Garcia. Amir Khan was supposed to be too experienced, too fast for Danny Garcia. Eric Morales was too seasoned. Um, he was a title holder, and then Swift beat him. A lot of people said Zab Judah even. They said, oh, I know Zab's had his ups and downs. People were arguing with me because I predicted Je Danny Garcia to beat Zab. And they were like, oh, it's a horrible stylistic matchup. Danny Garcia throws wide, wild, looping punches. And, and I've seen that. But I also picked Danny Garcia, and I cited my reasons in my video. And I was right. Uh, Zab Judah had a good showing in the last three rounds, but he was dominated for everything else in that fight. So, um, again, against all odds, Danny Garcia keeps showing up and, and improving and showing why he's uh, the lineal champion. The Lucas Matisse fight, a lot of people were on my head, like, no homo, but they were like, oh, Matisse is going to crush him. Oh, some of you guys get power happy. Danny Garcia has power as well, but you see that that raging Gennady Golovkin, Matisse power, and then you act like people are invincible. They still breathe the same air we breathe. They still have a chin like any other boxer. So devastating power doesn't mean you don't have to train. It doesn't mean you're immortal. And Angel Garcia had that belief in his son from a young age, got him into boxing, um, battled cancer himself, and this is where they're at today. Again, some people don't like Angel Garcia. He has a lot of outbursts. To me, I think it's good for boxing. I think boxing would be boring if you only had one personality type. Now, I can appreciate Andre Ward. He's from a tough city from where I'm from, Oakland, California. Um, so he represents the Bay. Oakland is a hard place to grow up in, and he conducts himself like a true businessman, speaks very eloquently, and I think we also need that in boxing. Andre Ward doesn't necessarily... He's not braggadocious. He doesn't um, start dancing in the ring like Adrian Broner. And to me, the contrast from Andre Ward to Angel Garcia is very apparent. Andre Ward just seems more like laid back and chill and humble, whereas Angel Garcia gets um, like crazy on the interviews and stuff like that. But again, all of that is needed in the sport of boxing to make things interesting. If we all acted the same, how much would you uh, be interested in boxing? How much would you want to see it if everybody had the same style of fight? If everyone had conducted interviews the same exact way? No different than hip-hop music. You got guys like, laid-back guys like Fab. He don't get much sicker than Fab. I strap up. He, he sounds like he had that effortless flow, like real laid-back and chill. Or Snoop. One, two, three, and to the foe. Snoop Dogg, ready to make an... You know what I mean? He has that real laid back flow. But then you also have those those rappers who are just ah like DMX, like stay out the dog. Cause if I catch you when the sun is down, run it clown, come up. I love my baby mama. I never let her go. You know what I mean? Or the Buster Rhymes. Everybody wanna give anyone a run. And then um that's needed. All of that's needed. You can't rap would be boring, boxing would be boring if everybody had the same exact um, style. So I appreciate Angel Garcia's uniqueness and he keeps it interesting. Whether you hate him, you still watch him because he might have a conduct <clears throat> or he might conduct an, a crazy interview or whatever. And he has belief in his son. So he's just passionate and emotional about the things he talks about. I care about Danny. Danny is my, he's like, fuck Matisse. Fuck Matisse. Danny is my, I speak the truth. I speak the truth. <laughs> he always going crazy on it. Like, so you need the Angel Garcia, the Kanye West, the people who are going to have these like meltdowns and um, outbursts and stuff, these rants, these episodes. It makes for great boxing. And it's a good contrast that he has with his son because Angel is very outspoken. 
and Danny Garcia is kind of bashful. He's he talks a little bit more. He's doing his rap thing now, but I get the sense that he he was kind of like a quiet kid. Um, but Angel Garcia is very boisterous and vocal with his thoughts. Um, I remember he did an interview with Fight Hub, and the one where he's like, "Fuck Matisse, fuck the Valentinos, fuck Matisse. We in America. You are the welfare check. We in America." Like he was going crazy on um, Marcos, and Marcos wasn't really even doing anything, but he was just that passionate and. Um, like I said, Tupac's my favorite rapper, and I like to see that. And one of the things I really love about Tupac was he was very passionate. Like, he made you believe what he was saying, whether you agree with him or not. He's like, Biggie shot me. They knew. They knew. Biggie's homeboys is Brett. You know what I mean? The way he presents it to you, you feel that, like, from the pit of his stomach, he, was, he really felt what he said in an interview. And Angel Garcia has that. I'm trust me. I'm not comparing Angel Garcia to Pac. Two different people, but they both have that passion. He really loves his son, and he's proud of his son, and it comes out in his own way. So, I mean, it is what it is. Whether you agree with his um, comments or not, I mean, like I said, he was doing an interview on Fight Hub. He didn't have to go off like that, but he's a grown ass man. I can't tell him what to say and do and how to conduct himself if that's what he wants. Uh, then that's what it is. He's like, you're not talking about the champ. You're not talking about the champ. Danny, Danny is the champ of America. <laughs> he was going crazy. Um, also, Zab Judah, the fight build up. He was like, take that motherfucker, Janet Jackson head off. <laughs> and he was starting shit with Zab. He started shit with Amir Khan. He was like, fuck Matisse. I mean, the dude's all over the place when it comes to these episodes. But again, leave your comments. Let me know what you think of Angel Garcia. One thing that's underrated is he's honed his son's skill and he's underrated as a trainer i mean i don't think he has many fighters like that have uh, titles and stuff like that um however i've heard him give good advice to his son maybe it's just their chemistry and he has that working relationship with his son but in the american fight he's like danny no you let him cut he's, he's getting to you like you know what i mean you can hear that passion and he had some good advice in there whereas some corners uh, for whatever reason, they don't necessarily provide advice on what the fighter can do to improve. He said some good advice in the Lucas Matisse fight and in the Miracon fight in between rounds about what he could do to close the gap. And even in the Eric Morales rematch, just listen to his corner advice. So props to Angel Garcia. Happy birthday, Angel Garcia. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think of Angel Garcia. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.